Hello. Hello. Hi, Griffin. Hi. Hi everyone, and welcome to the second part of our epic trip to Austria's Salzkammergut region. In the first episode, we took you on a tour with our four kids to Hallstatt and the Salzwelten, or the ancient salt mine, where salt has been mined for more than 7,000 years. We also went on a boat ride and took you high above the village of only 780 people to see some magnificent views of the Dachstein mountain range. You'll also see us try some of the local foods, like the Forella and the Rinderbraten. In this week's episode, we will show you how there is so much more to see and do in the region in and around Hallstatt than simply be a tourist. Our family really enjoyed a fun mountain vacation, and now we're going to take you along for the ride. Are you ready? Bist du bereit? Los geht's! So first, we stayed in a small village called Obertraun, which is just across the lake from Hallstatt. We stayed in a nice mountain cabin where we had a kitchen and could cook our own food. And the resort offers a sauna, a restaurant, and an indoor pool. There is a beautiful park on the Hallstättersee or the Hallstatt Lake, where you can enjoy so many fun summer activities like playing on the playground, going for a kayak, canoe, or paddleboard ride, swimming, grilling out, having a picnic, eating at the lakeside cafe, going for a bicycle ride, and taking a ferry ride. And while you're having fun, you get to enjoy the unbelievably beautiful scenery. If you think it looks good on camera, just imagine how magnificent it is in person. It really does take your breath away. Everyone is swimming, but I'm way too chicken to get in that water because it is cold. And I'm talking quietly because there's people all around and I always feel really funny in public talking to a camera when nobody's around. People start staring at you and I just feel goofy. Anyways, um, yeah, everyone's over there swimming. The water is cold, so they can have fun because I'm not a cold water person. Anyway, it's a gorgeous day. The spot out here by the lake is so nice. We really like this resort because it's like separate from Hallstatt. Hallstatt's very touristy, very crowded. And over here in Obertraun on the other side, which is only a five to 10 minute drive from Hallstatt, um, it's really nice because you have all of this space, you're in nature, it's great for families. There's tons of kids here with families. Uh, the resort we're staying at is called Dormio Resort. They have a sauna, a sauna. They have a swimming pool. They have a restaurant. You can get breakfast here. Um, and then you have the really nice apartments we're staying in. So yeah, highly recommend. It's a really nice place to stay. Griffin, how's the water? It's not too bad. Is it freezing? No. Careful, when I fly, you have to come in! Okay! Ty! <laughs> Ella, the slide itself won't be scary, but the, it's just the water is going to be cold. <laughs> She's determined. She's like, I'm not going to let this slide take me down. <laughs>
Always bright blue. The ocean's a little deeper. If you can see it like I do, can't think of nothing better. To come up, enjoy the view. Feels like the perfect weather for every dream to come true. While Hallstatt is, in our opinion, definitely worth the visit, there is so much more to see and do in and around the charming village, and still be able to skip the crowds. The first two days of our stay in Obertraun were cloudy and rainy, but mountain weather is always unpredictable. However, you can see from this footage, it didn't matter as the views were still so breathtaking and peaceful, like we had stepped into a fantasy movie. And there's still many things to do indoors. This area, the Salts Kamragut region, is full of caves, so since it was raining, we headed off to one of the closest caves in Obertraun, the Kopenbrulehule. Try to say that three times fast. Okay, so what are we about to do? We're about to go in a cave. We're going spelunking. Yeah, and it's and... Kopenbrulehule. Kopenbrulehule. Wait, you're right, Grayson? Koppenbrüllerhölle. 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 How did you say it, Grayson? Koppenbrüllerhölle. Because of all of the rain, the river was rushing super strong, and there were little waterfalls everywhere. It was a lovely hike. fun of getting to this cave is all of the climbing. The kids are having a lot of fun climbing on the rocks and playing with the waterfalls. So it's a really nice walk here. Visiting the cave was so cool. Most of it was in German, and surprisingly, our kids could actually understand most of it, and they were interpreting it for us. We understood some words and phrases here and there, but most of it was science and nature vocabulary, which are not things I've learned in my classes just yet. It's amazing how our children were barely understanding German this time last year, and now can understand a tour guide in a cave.
After the cave, we were quite tired and very hungry, so we headed back to Obertraun to get some pizza and go bowling. In German countries, it's called Kegeln or Kegelbahn, and the game is quite different than what we know in the US. We didn't know until we started playing that we really had no idea what we were doing. There you go. Are we having a mech ball bowling championship? I guess. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my doing it first and it was just a big free-for-all and we had no clue how to do it <laughs> we finally figured it out as the game started going yeah but yeah cool. but you, you each get two turns and the pins go up each time and in the u.s you get two turns but you work on the same pins knocking down the same pins so it's a lot different and <laughs> yeah Okay. Another difference between Germany and the USA is that each ball is the exact same size. And in the US, you have different balls depending on how big and strong you are. Well, they're all they're all <laughs> the same size, but they're different weights. Oh, they are different weights? Yeah, they're different size. And you I go, didn't notice that. You go around, you go, no, here they're not. Oh. They're all the same size and weight here. But in America, oh, okay. they're all the same size, but they're different weights. Okay. And you go yes. around before you start and go and find the right weight ball that you want to have. And you always Depending you use the same size. ball the whole mm -hmm. time. But here you just use any of the balls because they're all the same. Yes. And the balls are definitely smaller. And they have two holes instead of three holes. So, yeah. I mean, you think like these little differences are not that big of a deal. And, and then you start to do it and you're like, we have no clue what we're doing. But it doesn't matter. It's just a game. It's just for fun. But... <laughs> What we do you were, mean? We I were, won. I had the most points. Yeah, Kevin had how many points did you have? 120 or something. Yeah, I had like 55. <laughs> <laughs> and watching Ella roll the ball was really funny because she just, you know, she's the youngest and the smallest, and so the ball didn't go very far. It was funny. So then we realized while we were in there that in the U.S. you also have to pay for your shoes and and you have to rent shoes. I don't know. Maybe in other bowling alleys. Uh, we shouldn't say bowling. Kegelbahn. <laughs> in other Kegelbahn places, you, you do have to rent shoes, but not here. And then it was only 23 euros for six people for an hour, hour and, and a half. half. Yeah. And we we're pretty sure in the U.S. that would cost... How much? 60 or 60, 60 to or 90 70 euros. Or who knows, something like that. It would be a lot, yeah. And this is in a very touristy spot where everything is super expensive. <laughs> I went to the grocery store and spent... 98 euros on like a quarter of the groceries I normally spend for the week. So yeah, so even though it's probably the price is probably jacked up here and it still is not that much. Hiking shoes, you've got all the right equipment. I can already 
feel the temperature drop? Can you? How does it all of a sudden get How does it all of a sudden get Kevin? We are in the ice hurla, the ice cave. It's cold, we had to bring our winter jackets to come in here. It's gonna be cool. But what's the whole word in German? I don't ice, need a winter ice jacket. Reisen. But it's Reisen. Reisen. Reisen ice hurla. Reisen ice hurla. Yeah. Reisen. 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 Yeah, you know. Reisen ice hurla. Reisen ice hurla. This cave is nuts. Really worth seeing. This is aufgemacht. This is ganz wichtig, weil man draußen kalt Luft reinschmeckt und die ganze Hülle. All right, so that is the entrance where they originally found the cave. I think he said it was in 1910. And they found that opening and then went inside and they must have been in awe because that was the coolest cave I've ever been in in my life. So cool. I would definitely say this is a must see here in Obertraun in, in Hallstatt. Plus you also get this incredible view of Obertraun, Hallstatt, Hallstätter See. You get the whole the whole experience from up here, it's definitely worth coming. All right, we just came out of the Riesen Ice Hurle. It was really cool. Ice everywhere, a bridge to go over this giant chasm. It was just really cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know how, what else to say. It's just ice everywhere and amazing. Except come. If you come to Hall <laughs> yeah, you gotta sure. visit this. Definitely cool. You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. You're like a piece of heaven in a hurricane And it's bubbling over like a sweet champagne You got your mama's sunshine The only thing though was coming up here is a heck of a hike and <laughs> not for experienced hikers, it's normal but like for Kevin and Grayson it was fine but for the rest of us I was like <gasps> was so out of breath and so was everyone else they were all stopping as we were walking down and taking breaks so I mean if you're gonna come up here you've got to be in decent health you know you can't have arthritis in your legs or your hips or anything because it's a beast getting up here worth it yes and good exercise yes 
but it's hard. You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. You act just like your father. Yeah, you laugh at your own. You having fun, Griffin? Yeah. You're in your element, aren't you? Griffin doesn't go down mountains the way everyone else does. Like sweet champagne. You got your mama's sunshine. You got your daddy's rain. Say, Grayson, the most popular toy on vacation has been the Hey everybody, we're on the top of Klippenstein, about 2100 meters above sea level. And it's really cool because you can see the snow, what's left of the snow from the winter, and just you get a 360 panorama view. So we got to head to the Five Fingers, the lookout platform. I think we'll get an even better view over the lake. Yeah, it's really cool to see the snow right here and you can see how thick it is. And it's, you know, summertime and it's still, you see that? Isn't that cool? up there guys pretty amazing huh Slice of heaven up here. I mean, it's just God's country. Wow, it's incredible. The hike to get out to the Five Fingers is, is not a hard hike, but we're already pretty tired from the other hike and the cave, so it's a lot. But wow, it's just beautiful up here. It's worth the view. And there's just ice everywhere, so, you know, snow. What do you think? It's pretty scary. It's scary? Okay, I'm about to look down. Oh god.
Grayson, what did you think? It is very scary. Very scary. There's, there, there's one with a um, with like a picture yeah. frame where you can take a picture, and then there's one with glass like on the bottom, and then there's this one where it's like it, it doesn't go that far out, and then there's like. Like, I don't know, it's slanted kind of, so we could take pictures, I don't know. And then there's one where it goes out, and then there's this little hole that you can, that you, well, uh, it doesn't go all the way through. There's a little thing so that you can't get dropped through, but you can see through the hole. And then, and then, and then the last finger, it has a, um, what do you call it, telescope on it. Wait, no, telescope. What is it called? Yeah, telescope. Telescope? Yeah. Wow, cool. So you liked it? And it was scary. It was scary. And it's in June. I yeah. mean, think about how thick it is in January. And, and I'm wearing short sleeve shirt and 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 short and short pants, and I'm still warm. I know. Wow. In this, takes it's a, as thick as I am tall. I mean, like, how thick was it before? All the way up to the sky. This thing is huge. Right. It'll and take a long time for that to melt. I know, right? <laughs> yep. And yeah, I don't even see it melting. Like, I don't see drips. You'd think you hear, like, a stream coming down from it, but, but you don't. Like, all the minerals and rocks, they've fallen into the ice and merged with the snow. And that's what's made it so strong. Oh, really? Like, it's so dirty, you can see? That's all the... Uh-huh. Like, dust doesn't melt. Wow, there... cool. It's like winter, but way cooler. Right, you're not freezing cold. You don't have to have your snow gear on. Yeah, the ice is so thick, you don't have to worry about falling in. It's the same as the ground below you, but much more slippery. Yeah.